Hello everyone, thank you so much for being a part of the Foothills Church of Gilroy. Uh, today we're going to be talking about what is admirable or what is good, a good report. And uh, it comes from Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. And I'm so grateful that you're joining us today. Will you bow your heads with me and let's have a word of prayer. Father, we just ask that you would bless this message and bless everyone, Lord. Bless everyone wherever they are and, and however they're listening. I pray that your, your spirit would be with them. And uh, Lord, I pray that your, your spirit would speak through me today and that we would be able to hear what your spirit has to say to us, your church. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So Philippians 4.8, we've been talking about this for a while. Finally, brothers and sisters, Paul writes, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, which is what we're going to talk about today, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And so I want to talk to you today about, about thinking on what is good so that we have a good report. So that what we say is good. And so what is admirable, really, when you break it down into the, into the Greek of what Paul was saying there, is it really has to do with what comes out of our mouth. That we want it to be admirable. So whatever is admirable, then, means to have a good report. Um, last week we talked about how you can find the good in anything or you, or, or you can find the bad in anything. Well, we can speak what is good or we can speak negative. We can speak terrible things. But God wants us to speak good things, to, to, to see the good, and then to declare what is good. Well, God is good. So it's declaring God. Finding ways to speak good. You know, just like Joshua and Caleb, you know, in Numbers chapter 13, Moses, they got to the, to the edge of the promised land, and they had only been in the desert for about two years at this point, a little under two years. And they get to the border of the, of the land of Canaan, and Moses sends 12 spies, one representative from each of the 12 tribes, and he sends them into the promised land for a, for a, uh, a few days to explore the land. And they came back from exploring the land, and they had some of the fruits and, and produce of the land, and they said, it is an exceedingly good land. But... We saw giants there. We were like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we were sure that we looked the same to them. We cannot go into the promised land. We are doomed to fail. But Joshua and Caleb had a different report. They said, it is a good land, but our God can do anything. We can be victorious because of God, regardless of the giants in the land. Let's go in and take the promised land. And so they had a good report of the promised land. The other 10 spies, they spoke a bad report. And here's where it ties in to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. There was nothing admirable in what they said about God or their future. Now, if you want to read that story, it's in Numbers chapter 13. In the passage that I was referring to about a good report versus a bad report and the ten spies versus Joshua and Caleb is Numbers 13, 27 through 33. So if you want to look that up and read it, it's a wonderful story. Great lessons for us today on how we speak. Proverbs 18, 28, chapter 18, verse 20 through 21 says this. From the fruit of your mouth, your stomach is filled. With the harvest of your lips, you're satisfied. Uh, with the fruit of our mouth, our stomach is full or filled. You ever heard the, uh, the saying, you're going to eat your words? Yeah, that's pretty much what Solomon's saying, is you're going to eat your words. So you want to have words that are good. I remember years ago I was in college. I wasn't serving the Lord, and I was with my uncle, and um, I wasn't a Christian at the time, and I, I used some profanity, you know, just casually. I'm just it's the way I talked. And uh, my uncle said to me, "Well, I wouldn't even put that in my hand, much less in my mouth." <laughs> and it, that always stuck with me that sometimes things come out of my mouth that I wouldn't even want to hold in my hand. I'd want to step over, if you know what I mean. But with the harvest of our lips, we're satisfied. And then. Solomon goes on to say in verse 21, the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it or use it will eat its fruit. We will eat our words. So I want to speak words that are easily digestible 
and that sit well in my stomach. How about you? A good report. I think the words that Joshua and Caleb said, yeah, they could dine on those words. But I wouldn't want to be those ten spies in the words they said. I don't think that digested too well for them. You know, as we think, our lives will go. We've, we've been talking about this and why we've been on this passage of scripture, scripture for some time. So as we think, our lives will go. But listen, as we speak, so the seeds we sow. Our words carry weight, great weight. Well, we just saw power of life and death is in our tongue. But we can always speak a good report, and here's why. Our God is always good. Our God is always good. I, I read this not long ago in the book of Nahum. Nahum. You see, I, uh, and I encourage you to do this. I read, I read the Bible every year from cover to cover. I start in Genesis and Matthew, and then, and then I just read. I read like three chapters in the Old Testament and a chapter in the New Testament. I'm done within the year. So not long ago, I was reading in Nahum chapter 1, and, it, and this is what Nahum wrote. The Lord is good. A refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in Him. But I just love those four words that open up that verse. The Lord is good. Man, that's full stop right there. Believing in God's goodness helps us speak a good report. The more I focus on how good God is in my life, the easier it is for me to say good things, to report good things, to declare good things. But if we struggle with doubt, and, and primarily in doubt that God is good, because we go through hard times, and when we go through hard times or bad times, we can think, God isn't good. So if we doubt that God's good, we can be overcome with fear that what we're going through will be the end of us, which affects the way we talk. That's when people start speaking negative things into their future. It's because they doubt the goodness of God and fear begins to take hold of them. And they begin to, their, their dialogue is disgusting. Rather than declaring that God is good. See, negative speech is linked to bad thoughts and wrong beliefs. What's in your heart, or what's in your head and what's in your heart. Negative speech is linked to those, correlates to bad thoughts and wrong beliefs. See, Jesus said this in Luke 6, 45. The mouth speaks what the heart is full of. In the King James Version, I believe it says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you're talking negative about your future or negative about your past or negative about your present situations, if all that comes out of your mouth is negative, 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 there's no goodness of God in your thought life or in your heart, your belief system. See, if our, if our hearts are filled with the belief that God is good, we, like Joshua and Caleb, will speak a good report about our life, a good report about others' lives, and it will bring promise to others. Just as they spoke, Joshua and Caleb spoke well about the promised land, when we speak well, it actually brings promise to people, to ourselves. Because you hear what you say. And if you're just talking bad stuff and negative stuff and mumbling, griping, complaining and how horrible your life is, woe is me, being a victim, there's no promise in that. Thinking and speaking what is good gives hope to other people. And it, it, hey, it gives hope to yourself. And that, in Numbers chapter 13, what God wanted to bring the Israelites to, the promised land, was the place of hope where hope would be fulfilled. So God, we can, we can have a good report because God is always good. And because God is always good, it's all good. If you really believe that, then you believe that this is all going to work out for my good. Listen to what Hebrews 13, 5 says. God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Now, a human being can say, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you, but they just might. Because we humans can't.
can't really fulfill the word never, except in the case of eating liver. I can tell you that never will I eat liver again. My dad made me, used to make me eat liver as I was growing up, and I could not stand liver. Uh, uh, beets. Liver and beets. Never will I eat liver and beets, and I think I can fulfill that. But when God says never, boy, he means it. So whether we feel it, actually him, or not, God is always with us. And God is always good. So you are carrying within you goodness. I love what David said in Psalms chapter 23 at the end of that. I think it's verse 5 or 6. He says, and goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. All the days of my life. Goodness and love. If God is with me and God is good, good is always with me. So shouldn't that change the way I talk? Even when we're going through our darkest times. Let me tell you. The last year and a half since Foursquare fired me because we wanted to withdraw from the denomination, locked us out of our building and took $556,000 from our bank account. Those have been, there, there's been some really dark times in my life. But God's always been with me. Foursquare may have turned their back on me and forsaken me. Well, some would say, well, you wanted to turn your back on them. I wanted to part company with them. We didn't believe the direction they were going is the direction we want to go. More hurdles than help. These have been some dark times for me, but God has been with me every step of the way. In fact, I would say this, God is especially with us in our darkest hours. This last year and a half, I think I've grown as a human in many, many ways. I have, I've been on an, on a, on an acceleration of growth since this happened. Because God's always good and good is with me. God is with me. So if God has said, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you, we should trust Him. We should trust that's true. Because He means it. He means it. So, let's establish these three things. God is good. That's established in my heart and mind. Establish it right now in your heart and mind. Declare it to yourself. God is good. Number two, He's with me. He's with you. If you've given your life to Jesus Christ, if you've confessed Him as your Lord and Savior, I can guarantee you that, that God is with you. So He's always good, and He's with you. And He's always working in us and for our good. The things that man has done to me in the last year and a half have not been good. Some of the things that man, and when I say man, I say four square. Some of the things that man has done to me in the last year and a half have not been good. And there's been things that they've said about me that have not been good. But God is good. God is always good. And He is working all these things for my good. As I told you, I've been on a growth acceleration since all this went down. And that... That's Romans 8, 28, that says, We know that all things, and that we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Listen, I'm not perfect, but I love God. I'm not perfect, but I'm called according to His purpose. I own my sin so I can disown it. When I fall, I ask Jesus to help me get back up and help me keep moving me towards Him. So, God's working all the things for my good. Because of this, I can always find good in any situation I'm going through. Find it. Search for it. Seek it. Look for it. You'll find good. Especially if God's with you. He's at work right now for our good. Now, some of the, thing, some of the things about work is you don't always see work pay off immediately. Sometimes you have to work at something for a while to see the benefits. Just ask a farmer. You can do all the hard work of planting a seed, but you sometimes have to, well, not sometimes, you always have to wait for a harvest. So shouldn't this change the way we talk about our troubles? If God's good, it should change the way we talk about our troubles. We can now speak positive words that are not rooted in some... Oh, you know, it's all going to work out. You know, name it and claim it. You know, confess it and possess it kind of a thing. I'm not saying that. 
But, but we can say positive things because it's rooted in faith that God will work all things for our good because he said it. So when I speak positively that good is going to happen in my life, it's rooted in faith in God, not faith in me or faith in man. See, because God said it, it's true. But hey, listen, if God hadn't said it, if God had not said that he's working all things for our good, then we're just down to crossing our fingers. I hope this works out. You know, somewhere over the rainbow, it'll all be beautiful. Well, if God's not in it, that's not necessarily true. But if God said it, it is. That's where our faith is, in His Word. I'm going to close with this scripture. It's in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. This is after Joseph uh, has revealed himself to his brothers. He's the prince of Egypt. He's number two in, in all of Egypt. And Jacob, their father, passed away. And his brothers came to him and said, you know, before dad passed away, dad wanted to make sure that you wouldn't take vengeance on us. And Joseph was like, what are you talking about? I could take vengeance on you. I've forgiven you. Walk in the freedom of forgiveness. I'm paraphrasing a bit, but, but then, this is not paraphrasing. This is what Joseph said. Genesis 50, verse 20. Talking to his brothers. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. To accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. Isn't that wonderful? You can say that too. There's been people that have intended to harm you. Maybe governments that have intended to harm you. Maybe a denomination that intended to harm you. But God intended it for good. For you to grow, mature, or for Him to do some glorious thing in your future. So let that change the way you talk and think of what's admirable. Speak admirable words, a good report. Let's bow our heads. Here's a good report. God said this in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Well, Lord, we'll cling to that word and we'll believe what you said. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a terrific day and we look forward to seeing with, uh, speaking with you next week.